So previously we spoke about this guy known as James Gates. He's a one of the world's top physicists and he's discovered lines of computer code in the fundamental equations that describe reality. And this raises quite a few existential questions such as are we living in a illusion, a, a simulated reality, kind of like on a computer. Well, this video is going to be part of a series of many, which will go over this idea of the simulation hypothesis. In the last, let's say, 100 years, scientists and physicists have been discovering an increasing amount of evidence that has been showing that the world in which we live in is not physical like we thought, but rather behaves more like a computer simulation. And in these series of videos, I'm going to be showcasing the evidence for this idea. But today we are going to be talking about the fact that the universe is pixelated. Space, time and matter is all quantized. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if I were to take a photo out, I'll take the picture of my pro I'll take my profile picture and I'll to paste it into Paint Shop. Here it looks pretty clear. You don't notice any inaccuracies. But as I zoom in, you'll notice that the image becomes increasingly distorted. And when I zoom into the high levels of magnification, you'll notice that this thing that looked like a consistent continu a continuous image is actually now quite blurry and if you look carefully it's made out of many small diff uh, many little squares and these small little squares i don't know if you can see it it depends on the size of your screen in which you're watching this on i do recognize that perhaps some people are watching this on their phone and they're not going to be getting the effect of it but what you should be seeing is many small little squares of color uh, all over the place and basically when you look at any image on your computer it's made up of thousands of these small little squares and you don't notice them because they're so small but what they do is they create the image in which you see they are known as pixels now the reason why your computer does this is to uh, is to cut down on storage space because let's see let's say you had a very good camera that could capture perfect quality uh, down to the atomic level and you took a photo that photo uh, there would be too much information for your computer to reproduce that to produce every single tiny uh, microscopic dot of light on that particular photo so what you a uh, computer or TV or whatever it does is it summarizes the image. It turns it into these little square blocks of color and by doing this it reduces the amount of space for the image. Now it's interesting because our universe is actually, see, you see a lot of things in computers are pixelated. There's nothing which is continuous or infinitely dividable if you win a video game that space in which you move upon is quantized if you're listening if you're watching a movie it looks like one continuous image where the guy is walking but actually it consists of many still images slightly different from each other that when put together looks like a character's actually moving so nothing when it comes to computers, or at least the ones we have, is continuous. It is all quantized into bits, a smaller little components that are finite, even music. But now it's interesting to discover that the universe works on the same principle. And the, the universe has something known as the Planck length, which is the smallest amount of space that can be divided all time you cannot break space up into any smaller components than that so if i had let's say a 200 meter plank of wood and i cut it in half we'll have 100 meters we we'll have two 100 meters planks of wood and if i were to take a 100 meter plank of wood and cut it in half again i will have 50 meters and it, uh, 50 meter plank of wood and if i kept on doing that if i kept on cutting the remaining bit of wood in half over and over again i will continuously get smaller and smaller pieces but up until now we've kind of thought in science that 
space is continuous so if I were to continue cutting that wood well we actually assumed that it's continuous or kind of think that it probably is continuous I can't say that we believed it but the idea is if you were to continue cutting up that piece of wood over and over again you would do so for forever without getting to the smallest component because no matter what area of space you take there's always a smaller area which um, exists within that space and then a even more tiny area but it turns out that our universe actually has a smallest unit of time and space now we discovered the Planck length by observing light so right here I have something known as the black body spectrum and what it does is it maps out light so before I go into describing what this is let's understand what is light light is created through small microscopic particles known as photons and it's the vibration of these photons so the light is actually producing millions of photons which travel towards the earth and these photons bounce off objects as light rays and enter our eyes and our eyes interpret this as light now what happens is these photons vibrate they are constantly in a state of vibration and the speed in which they vibrate or the wavelength of their vibration determines the color in which we see very a very low vibration would be red a higher vibration of that particle would be yellow and as the frequency increases it will go from blue it will go from green blue to violet but now there's also colors in which we cannot see, which cannot be looked at by the naked eye, but many other animals can observe these. So we can only see a small portion of the light spectrum, which we call visible light. Anything that vibrates lower than the color red is known as infrared, and we cannot see it with our naked eyes. Anything <coughs> vibrating faster than violet is known as ultraviolet and we cannot see those colors either with a naked eye so right here we have a graph and you'll notice that the color spectrum is present in it now what happened was scientists tried to map out the freak uh, different frequencies of photons and their corresponding the corresponding light in which they would produce as well as their intensity or brightness or level of radiation the intensity can also be seen as the radiation produced by those colors and they so they mapped it out they took different frequencies and looked at the corresponding light levels it would produce so here on the um, horizontal axis we see the wavelength and we see how if the wavelength is small we'll have red and then if we increase it we'll have yellow green blue but we also see how the intensity of these different colors varies so yellow is more intense than red green is more intense than yellow and so on so this was through practical experiments but then what they tried to do is find an equation that would be able to map out this data so say I were to give you a certain frequency you would be able to calculate you would be able to do calculations with it like figure out what is its corresponding level of light and what is the intensity or radiation of that light or if I were to give you a certain uh, light what is its radiation and vibration and they tried to base this model on Newtonian classical physics which is was basically the mainstream model of physics at the time but as I've said in previous videos the idea of Newtonian physics or classical physics is slowly beginning to be debunked and turned over on its head the more we look into things like quantum physics or uh, the theory of relativity but what they did was they tried to map out they tried to find a calculation so here again I have another image this is the um, black body spectrum but along with it you will see a dotted line towards the right of it and this dotted line is actually the result of their equation and what they found was 
when they used the Newtonian physics to try to work this stuff out, it completely contradicted the practical data in which they gathered, meaning that them, there had to be something, this, it was known as the um, ultraviolet catastrophe, and it was a catastrophe because in maths, you want calculations that can predict the external world. You use mathematics to calculate things as they happen. So in physics, if I throw a ball into the air and I know its location, uh, direction and velocity, I should be able to calculate where it's going to end up. But this, the calculation they came up with, uh, came up with based on Newtonian physics, completely contradicted the practical data in which they observed. And this was quite worrying because it meant that something must be fundamentally wrong with their understanding of physics, meaning that Newtonian physics had to be wrong in some way. And they actually figured out, so what they found in their data in when they did the calculations was that the formula worked, but only for the low levels of light, um, very low vibration uh, infrared light. But as it started approaching the higher, uh, the higher vibrations of light, we found that the calculations would get completely different answers. They would start getting very... Um, predicting high levels of radiation, even approaching infinity. So if this mathematical model was right, it would completely contradict what we see in the external world. If the world worked upon this calculation, our world would be covered with ultraviolet light. Sorry, just needed to briefly pause the recording there, but basically if the calculation were true, the one they came up with, our universe would be bombarded with um, gamma rays radiation, which is not the case when we observe the physical world. So it showed that something had to be fundamentally wrong with our Newtonian physics. And there was. Newtonian physics assumes that space is inf infinitely dividable. So no matter what size of space you measure, there can always be a smaller unit of space. But what was discovered, even with, especially with quantum physics, that there's a limit to how small something can be. It cannot be smaller than the Planck length. And they then put this Planck length into the equation. They came up with a new equation and it fit the the practical data in which they measured perfectly. And furthermore, so this length is known as the Planck length, and it's not just used in this equation, it is used in now so many quantum physics equations, and it works every single time. It's been used in a number of equations, and it has accurately defined reality up until this point. So there, that's like, so now we have evidence that our universe, the equations that describe the universe, is made up of computer code. But we also have evidence that our universe is also pixelated like a computer. And as I go on with these uh, videos, you're going to see more and more of the experiments that scientists have been recently doing that have been showing that our universe seems to be more like a kind of matrix or simulation than an actual physical world. In fact, further on in my videos, I will actually show you how the mathematics of a physical world and the logic of a physical world is impossible to create complex life.